Hey, I'm Kevin with Dark Wolf Artisans, and this is Nova with Dark Wolf Artisans. I just got this van. It's a 1991 uh, Ford Econoline, and we're going to do a budget build on it. Started off with $10,000 budget. We spent about $5,000 on the van. So we have about $5,000 to work with, and uh, we're going to see what we can do with that to make it new. First thoughts, what are you thinking? How do you feel about this? I think it's a beautiful van. Obviously, there's a few things right off the bat, but uh, let's go inside and check it out. There's just a few cosmetic things that I think we'll probably have to change. A little bit of rust, paint maybe. Other than that, it's actually in pretty good condition for a 1990 van. Smells like a 1990 Econoline with lots of carpet in it. The first thing I see is lots of blue. Looks like this thing probably turns into a bed. Yeah, a little bit outdated, a little bit janky. There's a little stove, refrigerator. Still some food in there. Back here we have the toilet. Got all these little lights. Some of the cabinetry is built fairly well, but this is kind of falling apart. So everything that's falling apart, we'll end up replacing and rebuilding. All right, I guess we gotta make a game plan. Yep. Let's get to it. Let's do it. I'm looking for an extension cord to pull out from the shop and hook up the van. We're gonna see what all works in there, see if the AC works, see if the lights work. <laughs> <laughs> we got the power, we got the power! Let's see what happens. Woo! What? Whoa! Is it cold? Yeah. Well, it's cold right now. Awesome. Yeah. As of right now, that light is not coming on, so it's not the greatest sign. I don't think we're gonna mess with it. The best idea is to get a new stove. Essentially, we're just gonna replace everything on this wall, this cabinet here. The flooring, we'll pull all of that out. We'll, we'll replace that with LVT. We're gonna leave the walls as much as we can. We're gonna keep the toilet, clean it up, maybe repaint the lid. The ceiling, we'll pull all of that down, figure out some wiring to put in some puck lights. There's the cabinet above the cab. We're gonna just replace the face of that. So there is, uh, to start off, quite a bit of demo to do. We'll go ahead and begin with tearing out this jumper seat. After that, we will start with pulling out these cabinets, start pulling out the carpet, take out the bottom of this couch, take out the air conditioner because we found out that it doesn't get as cool as we would like it to. After that, get some flooring. So here we go. Extreme up the nose shot. Here we go. So always wear safety glasses when demoing anything ever. We got quite a bit done. We are going to Home Depot to pick out some flooring. So I think uh, we're gonna go with this. I think it'll match that blue really, really well. So uh, we gotta get three boxes of this stuff. So instead of actually ripping all the floor out and replacing all of the subflooring, we're just going to cut a square and replace one spot because it's going to be way cheaper and take way less time. Safety first. Here she comes, Miss America. It's cold today in Kansas, so what we did is close up all the doors, brought this space heater in here because I hate the cold. Uh, so what we're gonna first do is do a little bit more demo, fill some holes in the ceiling to run wires for the puck lighting. All right, so let's get going.
So, so. Literally, like every single beginning, huh? Yeah, say so. Uh, <laughs> so, no. <laughs> I'm gonna use a uh, bigger hole saw. The hole for the actual puck light will be much smaller. So if I am a little bit off, I can move it a little bit. We have come to the end of the day. We got it quite a bit done, got the floor in. I think it looks really, really good. You can kind of see it behind me. Kind of brightens things up in here a little bit. We're moving along pretty good. Came in here and started thinking about things and really just want to go get some tacos instead of working. So that's what we're going to do. See that taco? <laughs> 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 <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> 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 Tacos are so good, you'll eat them out of your friend's mouth. <laughs> Back to work. <laughs> it's $106. That's a lot for what we just got. We're back! And we're gonna start doing some actual work today. I'm gonna cut the quarter inch for the ceiling, paint it. We'll put it up here. Let's get at it. Dance painting. They're break dance fighting. We have come to the end of day five. Painted the ceiling. We're done. It's Friday, four o'clock. Let's get out of here. Three days later. All right, day six of the budget build. Cut the board for the ceiling, primed it. I got the paint. Frosty, or no, toasty gray. Gonna go ahead and paint that up. Let it dry, cut up some pieces for the, the cabinets, get those all polyurethaned, and we'll go from there. We used one sheet of plywood for the, the boxes for the uppers. Probably use another for the lowers. I am putting this polyurethane on. If you don't put it on there, the wood will get super dirty. It'll get scratched up, it'll get all messed up, and this keeps it kind of nice and clean and looking pretty. Probably take about three coats, maybe even four. End of day six, I got all the boards for the upper cabinets cut. Got them all polyurethane. That's about it. It was quite a bit of work though. Well, well, well. We are here on day something or another. Just got back from Home Depot and uh, getting ready to paint underneath the couch piece. Went with this lovely orange, Home Depot orange. I wanted to use a color to make it pop and make it kind of a little bit more vibrant. And orange goes really well with blue. That's what we're doing. Oh, hi. I'm uh, just over here adding more wire to add puck lights in the ceiling. We have come to the end of the day. In the morning, we'll, we'll start again. See what the day brings. Today, we're pretty much gonna only focus on building cabinets. It should take all day to do. To figure out these uh, bulkheads, we're gonna start on this side where we can see kind of this shape here. That's where the old cabinet was, so we're gonna kind of go along those lines. I'll figure out these two cuts, essentially. So this is a pocket hole jig. I'm gonna put this on here and these will drill holes at an angle into the plywood so that when I put the face on, then I can 
screw in some uh, pocket screws to hold that face frame. Look at this. It's so spacious in here. Look at all this floor space. Here we go. like a glove. Today, we built upper cabinet boxes and the face frames for both are done as well. Tomorrow, we'll get back on doing the lower cabinets and face frames and hopefully have all of that done. That's it. Can you dig it? Your pencil always lives in your mouth. That's where it resides, yes. <laughs> me, sir. sir, you have a big hole in the side of your camera. <laughs> what are you? I just realized that the last cabinet did not uh, put my pocket screw holes in, so that's awesome. And then just reflected on all of the mis mistakes that have been made today. And it's definitely a Monday. Sounds like somebody's got a case of the Mondays. I'm over today. Didn't get those cabinets built, but we just need to come back and start over tomorrow, so. Are we ready? Are we going? So today, we're uh, <laughs> we're gonna switch up gears like I like to do. <laughs> we're gonna finish out these cabinets, cutting the side pieces and and doing all the face frames. Seems like it'll probably be a full day's work. So let's do this. Are you filming my butt? Nope. Will you? <laughs> Instead of cutting a whole feet of three-quarter plywood, I'm throwing it out at half inch that I had laying around. And I do have some th uh, quarter inch that I could slap on the side here to make it look one full piece. Wouldn't it be cool as f if while you were filming I chopped off a finger? No. Because then you would have it on video. What am I doing? Ah, get in the chopper now. I'm starving. Can I eat? Don't ask can, me. Can I eat, please? Where'd my consarned hammer go? I need to stop talking. Let's just do like a silent film for the rest of the day. <laughs> I did not accomplish everything that I set out to accomplish today. I did get all the face frames primed. So tomorrow, just some more priming and installing and go from there. Today, I plan on building the cabinet for the uh, electrical equipment in the back. Also building the cabinets for the uppers above the cab in the front. So that should be a full day. Let's get in there.
What's up, guys? <laughs> I started thinking while I was in there, I'm like, well, to make this cabinet do all these weird things is kind of silly. So we're just gonna chop it off and just have a little shelf up top. Hello. No, ma. Sorry, she won't do anything. Bam, dog. I'm gonna go ahead and build the face frame for this cabinet. Then this one down here will be the uh, breaker box, but I'll build that right now. I have pretty much everything built and ready to go other than the, the cabinets up top and I'm just ready to, it's been quite a day. So I just wanna sit here and brush prime and that's what I'm gonna do. Today wasn't the most eventful day. At least got the electrical box built, then got everything primed. When building that cabinet, added another sheet of plywood to the budget. It's time to go home. Today is Thursday. First off, I'm going to paint all the face frames that I primed. But after that, I will build some drawers. Yep, that's it. <laughs> it looks like a Home Depot run. There it is. Let's start painting. This is thing one and thing two. Wait. <laughs> Tweedledum and Tweedledee. <laughs> this here is Wes. Transcendent existence. And then there's Gorichigo. <laughs> Gorichigo! Now that we've got the uh, face frames in, they're all painted. I'm gonna go ahead and build the drawers that'll go in here. And then after that, we'll make the drawer faces and doors. So uh, to make these drawers, I'm gonna dado out a, a quarter inch slot in here to put the bottom of the drawer in. So I use this test piece to see how many blades that I wanna use or spacers for the dado blades. And you will see the finished product when it comes. I'm gonna sand the tops here and then route them and uh, then we'll polyurethane the uh, inside and out. Now that I have three coats on these drawers, I'm gonna let them sit overnight, but uh, yeah, I think we did good. End of the day today. It really feels like it's coming together. We got a lot done today. Feeling pretty inspired to, to finish this. And once it starts coming together, it kind of puts a little fire under my ass to keep on going. So I'm pretty excited about it. We're gonna come back tomorrow and get some more done. Oh, hey. If only I could tell Kevin to just do this to my house. 
without any extra, you know, promises of income. This looks great. Oh, we got tons of room. Hey, I'm Aaron Bockley, and Kevin challenged me with getting this electrical system built inside of his budget that he's got, which isn't a lot. First of the options actually was to just leave it alone and like, you know, keep it as it was. After seeing how the wiring is and how old it is, it really needs to be inspected. I'm gonna go ahead and walk through some of the options that I put together for this. Option A is a Vicpron system that has individual components in it. Option B is just a Jackery system that's just set on the floor in there. And option C is sort of a Jackery plus a few integration components to wire the power from it back into the van. I decided on option A because I think that it's gonna make the best amount of power for the vehicle, give us the most flexibility for systems usage and some reliability that I really want to make sure that we have in the system. All right, so let's go through the gifts that you brought me this morning. I'm just going to randomly pick stuff here. So a solar charge controller that'll allow us to put a couple panels up on the roof. This is going to be the main breaker for the battery bank. Power distribution box. Ooh. I'm excited about this one. This is our fuse block. You have your fuses here and you have your grounds are separated up here and your powers are on this side. This is a DIN rail component. These are kind of more like electrical Lego blocks. What do we got? Shrink tubing. Everybody likes shrink tubing. Shrink tubing and our lugs. So we got some big boy fuses here. We have a bit of battery cable, some two watt cable. Next, photovoltaic cable. More than sufficient to power any charge controllers that we're gonna be running off of those panels. It's up. Oh, this is a very large battery. This is gonna be 200 amps, lithium battery at 12 volts. This is actually way light for the size of an equivalent lead acid. Last but not least on our list of equipment is basically kind of the heart of this particular vehicle. This is an inverter charger from Victron. This is gonna hang on the wall in the back. That's all the stuff in the goodie box for now. Let's go mount some stuff up. We're gonna mount the big blocks of equipment inside of this bay. Kevin, I'm so sorry for putting extra holes in your vehicle. I'm just adding lightness to this. That's what I'm doing. Nobody's ever gonna know. How would they know? They'll never know. They'll never know. They're gonna know. Oh my gosh, it's TikTok leaking again. So we're gonna go to Home Depot. Uh, we've gotta get wires. We gotta get electrical panel. We gotta get breakers. We're gonna be as cheap as we can but not too cheap because we got to make it, you know, be safe and everything. We're looking at stranded THHN number 10 and number 86 is what we're getting. So we'll get 20 feet of that and 20 feet of this. All you do is kind of tuck it and then we count. I won't tell anybody except that the whole internet is going to know. Oh goodness. All right, so we're $304 in from Home Depot. Ooh. Yes, I think that's gonna look great. Time to start wiring. It's a Monday and we're back at it. Gonna start measuring doors and drawer faces. So right now we're gonna make some doors. For all the uh, upper cabinets, I actually have this leftover scrap maple, which is awesome. Right now, I'm getting ready to edge band all this plywood that I cut down for the doors. You can get this edge banding on Amazon for like 20 bucks. It ends up being a pretty cheap way of making doors and they turn out looking cool. What you do is you put it on here, heat it up, it's a, a little iron and there's glue on the back of this so it melts it to the wood. And then afterwards you take a little router and knock off the edge and then it'll look like one solid piece of wood. Today, I made all the doors and uh, drawer fronts, and I also drilled up for all the hinges on the doors, and then I started to box in the, the toilet area to eventually put the to uh, toilet back in. That's it, we'll get back at it tomorrow. Right now, I built the box for the toilet, and then I'm gonna go ahead and put flooring over this whole thing. Then we'll put the, the flange back in, and eventually the toilet. There it is, heck yes. That wasn't so bad. So moving on to this project here, I'm looking at this and 
I think that the best thing to do is to just chop this line right through there and build one cabinet in the end. It's going to look a lot better and be more functional. I can hear it now. You should be wearing a mask. And I should. <laughs> Wear your mask. <laughs> yeah. You just want to be on camera. <laughs> I want to be on TV. Well, I feel like I've gotten a lot accomplished today. Uh, first built out the pedestal for the toilet back here and then tore out all of this up here, which I didn't think I was going to do until today when I started thinking about it, got that and then built this cabinet that will take its place. Things are really coming together, so we'll see what tomorrow brings. Today, I am going to finish installing this cabinet. And after that, we'll start drilling the holes on the doors for the hardware. Then we'll go from there. You pushing? Oh, I'm pushing, bro. I mean, it has a slight angle this way, but that's so that shit doesn't slide and fall out, right? So you're saying that was by design? Hell yeah, it was. <laughs> For the hardware on the doors, I'm going to use these uh, latches. You can put the push button latches that will, you know, latch. Wow. When you push them out, they have a pull already built into them. So. Cleaning up for the day. Got quite a bit done. We have all the doors primed, so hopefully we can paint those tomorrow. And yeah, pretty good day. Today we got six pairs of Valacy drawer slides. We will show you the install pretty quick. Take the inner piece out. What I like to do is go with a horizontal slat on the front. That way you can adjust it forward and backward. And then on the back is moving it up and down to be flush with the bottom of the drawer. So you go with the vertical slot. In the middle is the uh, circular hole where it's already in place, so there it is. Now we will take the side brackets and put them in the, the drawer box itself. And now that I've got these drawer faces and doors all painted, I'm going to install the hardware. All right, so you get this ring and you can push it in. A rubber mallet actually works better. So that is in. This mechanism will be screwed to the back of the drawer face. And on the front, you see, when you push that in, it latches. And when you push it out, it unlocks and also acts as a pull. So you don't need to add any more hardware to it. They work really well. With that, we'll take the drawer box in there. We'll put it in the slot that it needs to go and we will position the drawer face on it and tack her in. Today, I did get the doors painted, drawers in, the hardware installed. Uh, we'll come back tomorrow and, and start anew. It is a new day today, and I uh, came back with a clear head and fixed some things, and now I'm ready to, ready to roll. First off, I'm going to install the face frame to the front of the upper cab, 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 cab cabinet. I have no other words for the front of the so we're going with cab cabinet and then we're installing doors and hardware let's do this
Knock on wood. The fridge that we went with is a, a little Danby fridge. I think it was like 17 cubic feet or whatever. I uh, got it on Amazon for about $215. Nova here is ready to go home. I'm pretty happy with what we got done. Got the, re the refrigerator in to see what we need to do to make it tight. We'll pull that out, fur that up tomorrow. Thanks. <laughs> Today, just kind of at the point where sort of trimming things out, finishing out cabinets, making them look pretty like Nova. The prettiest dog in the world. Let's do it. We're using butcher block tops, I decided, since we did get them a while back on sale at Home Depot for $250 a piece, plus super durable. They end up finishing out really nice. I think it'd be a, a good complement to these cabinets. I've got these countertops sitting in here. Over here on this wall, it kind of juts out and then goes back. I'm going to what we call scribe and make it fit back in the window nicely. And then I also have to cut the sink hole out. So I will figure out my measurements and we'll go from there. It has come to the end of the day yet again, and I'm really excited about how things are coming together. It looks amazing. There wasn't any really hangups today. Seems like every day I, I get ahead of myself, but we'll come back tomorrow and get going again. All right, today I'm gonna go get some stain to stain the countertops in there and uh, hopefully be able to put some polyurethane on it. I guess after that, we'll figure out where we're going from there. All right, we come to the end of the day. It's Friday. We've got the countertop stained and and first coat of polyurethane. So we're moving along. 
it's the weekend, time to go home. Oh, back from a long weekend. This is my second coat on polyurethane for this, so after this, we'll let it dry for a couple hours and then put a third coat on and we should be done. Oh, look what we got in the shop today. Yeah. We got the GE air conditioner window unit. It's a small, compact unit, so this is perfect for our application for sure. It cools up to 150 square feet, so like I said, it's small areas. It's so cute. Aww. It's a pretty easy install made by GE, and we'll put it in and see how it works. All the difficult stuff is out of the way. It's been a lot more enjoyable. Gives me a little little pep in my step. Today has been really productive. Getting ready to finish up these tables and call it a day. <laughs> Are we ready? Yeah, okay. we're ready. <laughs> so this is just a list to get me finished on my part of the build. And, and Aaron's thing, electrical, is separate from this, so. I started with the light balances and then the hardware for the cabinets side splashes for the cabinet we don't want things dropping back in the crevices behind the cabinet so and the ceiling trim the step flooring we got uh then the metal trim for that then uh i still have to paint underneath the front upper cabinet put up the led strips venting for the back of the ac underneath the couch then there's a little bit of trim then we will finally install the couch for good do the puck lights and the ceiling, then finish plumbing. So yeah, I'm gonna start with doing the hardware for the cabinet. I like uh, Taylor Swift. <laughs> yeah, I do. It's what you do when making me feel like I'm falling. Oh, yeah. I'll admit it. I ain't scared. I like Taylor Swift. What are you gonna do about it? So next up is installing the countertops. We're gonna attach the countertops from underneath. Yeah, so let's get to it. Got the sink in. <laughs> it's such a small space and it super sucks being underneath there. Went to put it in, couldn't fit it, had to take it apart, put it in, put it back together. It was terrible. It was terrible. We have reached the end of the day today. It's been probably the most productive day thus far, I think. We got the countertop in, done, both of them. The sink is in, it's not hooked up, but it's in. Got all the hardware on all the doors in. Got the trim down below the, the couch in. Refrigerator is permanently installed. Back cabinet installed. Got Like I said, it got a lot done and super productive. Oh, she's ready to go home. Go eat. See you today. We'll see you tomorrow.
got uh, a lot done today. Not a lot I can mark off on here just because things like the light valances are made and primed um, within an hour tomorrow. I'll have them painted in and, and installed. So I want to do it, but I can't. It's got to stay there until it's completely done. What we did do was puck lights and Nova did a really good job today too, didn't you? We're getting there. Goodbye. Well, it's uh, warm here. The hoodie comes off today. First off today, I think I'm gonna paint the val the light valances. I think that we'll be able to knock off a few of these things so that'll feel really good. It's Friday, it's almost the weekend. Let's do this. Oh my God, I am not sitting through another montage of Kevin painting. Like it got it's, hot and just melted into yeah, it. Yeah, just the carpet. Okay. Somebody cut the bowl head off of something and it got hot and melted onto the carpet. <laughs> I did. <laughs> oh, you did that? I did it. This jumper seat that was right here. That is stuck. Man. I'm almost have to just cut them. Yeah. Those are hot. I'm gonna say that's what it, that's what it is. That's exactly what it is. <laughs> that's pretty. Holy I shit. just okay. <laughs> Holy poop. <laughs> Holy poop. I've said shit so many times. <laughs> yeah, I told him that his his bleep budget has uh, been maxed out. All right. You have to start putting air horn now. Yeah. Not just bleep. We're in we're in the air horn now. <laughs> More room in the bank for that. Oh, it is. Look at that. I have came to sort of a brick wall, smash right into it. So I'm switching gears and I'm going to do something kind of fun. I'm gonna make a sort of art piece. The idea is to make a let's go up here out of wood. I feel like I've been saying let's go a lot. So yeah, let's get on and do it. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Seriously? Seriously. After all that, you're not gonna end it with like, let's go? Oh, <laughs> let's go. Let's go! <laughs> This is so cute. This is our arts and crafts project together. I'm just holding it. <laughs> Pretty cool. <laughs> I am completely stoked to be done with my side of this van build, but I am also really happy that Aaron's gonna come in and really do some kick-ass stuff. Can't wait till he gets here and does his thing. No. 
Hey, my name's Aaron, and I'm installing electrical in the $10,000 van build today. And we now need to put the battery in, and we need to put the electrical box in. Inside of this enclosure, there's enough room to be able to put a solar charge controller and some of the other auxiliary breakers and things like that. First part is get our panels in place so we can have them all fixed and safe and in the right spot. There we go. You want to use the wrong tools for the job. So if you're falling through time at the speed of light, that means that your component vector of all four dim dimensions has to add up to sum up to the speed of light. And the faster you physically translate through the three physical dimensions, the less velocity there is available for time to follow through. Smell you later. big reveal. There you go. It's electrical panel. A little better than it was before. Hello gorgeous. Let's wire some more stuff up. Basically today, get the 120 volt AC side wired and we'll get all of the DC circuits. Get to that point we can actually plug this on a shore power plug into an outlet and it'll start charging this battery. I don't know how far we'll get on all this today so we'll just kind of see how it goes. We got some two watt cable here. I think this is like just made in the United States sort of stuff. Made in the USA. And we have a fuse holder. This is a, a mega fuse holder. Not Omega, uh, a mega fuse. It's kind of hard to open sometimes, there we go. So we're gonna use some cutters and cut some stuff and maybe crimp some things. But we'll start with this. Lots of parts and pieces to hook up. putting solar panels in. I think we went with Renogy panels. They're kind of semi-flexible. These are 180 watts a piece, I think. 175 watt, I was close. This looks perfect enough to me. It doesn't take a lot of Cicaflex to glue stuff down usually. to six weeks later. Well, good morning. It's a beautiful day here at Dark Wolf Artisans. My name's Chuck, and today we are gonna be putting the bow on finalizing this budget build off-grid solar install. We got a small list of things to do, but they are the most important things, and that includes hooking up the solar panels, getting the wiring finally tidied up, configuring everything, and giving it a good test. So we better dive in before this sun gets any hotter. Pirate stance. Contours and dark are no way affiliated Captain Morgan's Spice Run. Please drink responsibly. You really got a good seat. Yeah, if only every job could just come to you like this one, you know? I could have skipped a step this morning. All right, so we got our box mounted. And at this point, I think everything's mounted. It's just time to do the part where we wire it all up. All right, so we've got our solar coming into this block. The last thing we have to do is come out of our kind of on off switch overcurrent protection into our charge controller. We'll just give everything a once over, but at that point we're ready to get on some of that free energy action. We went ahead and connected to our main battery negative, popping a fuse and this baby's ready to generate some juice from the sun. As soon as I connected that actually, it looks like the charge controller's ready to play ball. And we're getting the blinking lights and I'm seeing it show up here. Let me show you. We're bringing in 240 watts. So that's great. That means the panel side of things is working. We start to have power on things. I guess we could try that air conditioner. We're doing this live here. It's hot. I think high cool. Well, that's like pretty sad. Go ahead and hit that switch. 
Oh yeah. Well, I got the cold air blowing on my caps and that means we finished this job not a moment too soon. Just a quick recap on the system we have in this budget build van. We've got 340 watts of Renogy flexible panels mounted on the roof, going into a Victron smart solar charge controller. It's a 30 amp model, perfectly sized for a system like this. We've got 200 amp hours of uh, lithium iron phosphate battery powering our Victron MultiPlus 2000 compact inverter. It's a 12 volt inverter. And on the way there, we got a smart shunt for keeping tabs on things. And that's all you need to have a really functioning off-grid system that can even power an AC unit even on a budget build in your van. All right, guys, I'm doing a rust repair on this thing. It's our budget build. So we're not putting a lot of money in this thing. We're doing it as cheaply as possible, but as perfect enough as possible. Perfect enoughly, that's the new word. The rockers were totally gone on this side. The other side, just a little area that I've already repaired. As far as like body shop type stuff, we're gonna just do a patch on this. It's not a proper way to do this stuff. So don't judge me too much on this, guys. <laughs> this thing was so rusted, this piece was right here and this piece here came around and rolled right up. So that's what I'm gonna recreate. The cool thing is with all the buses we do here, we end up with a lot of waste product. So we got free metal laying around that's been paid for from other buses. So literally not any money going into the material cost of putting this together. I'm gonna uh, hop into it. on here about half inch away and that's where our rivet row will be right like so it's almost 45 inches so i do like uh, nine equal spaces and eight fasteners in here So now those two panels can be basically clamped together and I can tack weld all that completely across there and I will attach that to that inner rocker panel. All right, well, I'm gonna put this one on. Why not that one last rivet? Oh, because it was directly in front of me and I didn't see it. <laughs> True story. It is weird, like from the angle you can't, you can see it, but from here you just don't see it. There you go, that make you happy. Uh, so I'll give you guys a quick recap of what I've done as far as metal work on this thing. I've done the step here and I took the running boards off of this thing. So this is just a little patch panel I made. I'll take you over on the other side and show you what I, what I did over there. So this side over here definitely had a whole bunch of rust across the entire bottom. So I actually built part of the inner rocker panel and the outer and then just riveted it all back in place. So it's all sealed and riveted and put back in place and it'll be truck bed liner spray as well. And as far as the material on this project, it was all free. So this is all scrap metal from our bus 
conversions that we do over there on the other side. There is a few dollars probably in rivets and sealant on this thing, but it doesn't really add up to much. So we, we stuck within our budget doing it this way really well. So I think that wraps it up for me on this project. Thanks for tuning in. All right, now that uh, Wes and Aaron have finished up their part of the budget build, let's go inside and check out the van. Well, first off, we pretty much completely gutted this whole van. There were a few cabinets up here, a little bit up there, but we tore that out, built a whole new cabinet, put a fridge in, some drawer space over there, kept the couch, which is actually in pretty good condition, put a new floor in, kept the toilet, but we repainted the lid. Other than that, we put a badass electrical system in here and some puck lights in the ceiling, and that's about it. As you remember, we were attempting to do this whole build in under $10,000. With my calculations, uh, I think we came about $17 under budget. But with the glue, sandpaper, and little things like that, I think that we came right in at about $10,000. So I'm gonna count this as a success. That's a wrap on the budget build. I would personally like to thank Wes, Chuck, and Aaron for lending their talents and abilities to this fan. Without them, it wouldn't have been able to be done or it would have given me a huge headache. So yeah, I guess that's a wrap on this, this fan and uh, can't wait to see where it goes from here. Thank you.